It's the strongest of all the weak acids. So we'll just call it strong. So yeah, we're talking about uh, given these ionic compounds, are they acidic, basic, or neutral? Was I off? Okay. KNO3. No. That means NO3 would be able to accept a hydrogen. No. It's a conjugate of a strong acid. HNO3 is a strong acid, therefore NO3 is neutral. Oh, wait, yeah, I meant to say neutral. <laughs> oh, sure. No, no, because it's a strong acid. Because. Okay. For the same reason the chloride is neutral, the nitrate ion is from HNO3. HNO3 is a strong acid, therefore nitrate ion is neutral. Nitrate ion is not able to accept a hydrogen. You remember when I was uh, showing you that a strong acid with a big, bold arrow would break up into uh, this, a bad idea, it's not an acid itself. I'm gonna go back, way back to the beginning, like the third slide. Yep, there it is. Remember I was talking about strong acid? See that arrow that I made? Yeah. How many directions did that go? Both directions? No, it goes one direction. Does it go? No. <laughs> Does it do that? No. Do you see the arrow? So that means that A ion. How many of those A ions are there? Six. Chloride, bromide, iodide, sulfate, nitrate, perchloric. Those six are not able to go that way and take a hydrogen. They can't 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 take a hydrogen. They can't. Really? They can't take a hydrogen. Really? Anybody have any questions about that? <laughs> Jazz, you want to ask a question? They can or can't. They can't take a hydrogen. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Why can't they take what? What can't they take? They can't take a hydrogen. <laughs> Who else? Why? How else can I clarify this? Why? How many of those A ions are there that can't six. take a hydrogen? Six. There are six. Which ones are they? The Chloride, bromide, you? the six conjugates of strong. Wait, Do we have the idea? Wait, is it because no. it like completely dissociates, so like it can't go back to its original? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> now, if it's a weak acid, those ions are able to take a hydrogen. Why? Because the arrow goes both ways. <laughs> Talking about the A. Yeah, this thing can take a hydrogen. So. Um, I don't know if it would have helped if I would use different symbols for those, so they were both A's. Um, I think I had one down here. No, I didn't. I was just um, something like uh, HNO2. HNO2 is not a strong acid; it's a weak acid. So that means that NO2 ion is able to accept the hydrogen and go back that way. See the arrow? It goes that way and it goes that way. So if it goes that way, that means the NO2 is obligated to grab a hydrogen and, and uh, accept it. This, let's say this is the chloride ion, HCl. The chloride ion, oh, it's trying to go back. Oh, man, it really wants to go back. It can't. It can't do it. It's unable to take a hydrogen. Samir? Wait, if it was like NH3, so like NH3 can take, it, take, it can take the hydrogen. Yeah, there would be the NH3. This is NH3 right here. So it would be NH3 plus H2O? Yeah. And then it would break up into O. It would take a, a hydrogen off of the water. That's its job as a base. Why? Because that N has a lone pair on it. It's a little negative cloud. It really likes hydrogen ions. Um, that positive hydrogen ion would go on it. So that would make NH4 plus, and just as the pattern shows, it gains not just a hydrogen, but a positive hydrogen ion. So not only does the formula change, the charge changes as well. It goes up by one charge. Yep. And then the water, which lost the hydrogen, is now the hydroxide. Yep. I'm glad we had this little talk. So let's go back. I think it's side 18. No, I went too far. Okay. So ignore this, because this is not HNO3. The water was neutral. The NaCl, remember, sodium is neutral because it can't offer a hydrogen. It's not acidic. It's not going to take a hydrogen because it's positive, and hydrogens are positive. The chloride ion, what about the chloride? It's unable to take a hydrogen. So it's neutral. 
That's why I had said that uh, they're both conjugates of strong. Cl is a conjugate of a strong acid, therefore it's unable to take a hydrogen. The NO3 ion is in the same situation as the chloride ion. It can't because it's the conjugate of a strong acid. But NO2 can, right? Yes, NO2 can. NA is neutral. Right. So this is neutral. The NO2 ion is basic. Therefore, the solution would be basic. You put sodium nitrite into water, and you don't expect anything to happen. You just see the pH go up. The pH would go up higher than 7 because that means it's a base. Wait, that one is. The next one is yes, why? Right, yeah, yeah. The NH4 has an extra hydrogen on it that when it dissolves, it can give off. How can we do this before the green? Oh man, should have told me that. so helpful. Actually, I should have done Yeah, the last one. Um, you have to recognize that um, amine compounds are nitrogen compounds. Typically, uh, organic compounds that have nitrogen. They're neutral. But this, this nitrogen thing, nitrogen quantity, is a polyatomic ion. How do we know that? Because this is an ionic compound. All these are ionic compounds. So if the NH4 it has a positive one charge, that means that if it loses uh, a hydrogen ion, it will go to neutral. So it's a nitrogen compound after it has gained a hydrogen. That makes it a conjugate acid of that nitrogen compound. So being a, an acid, uh, it would make the solution acidic. Because the chloride ion is neutral for the same reason that chloride ion was neutral. Yeah? Now that we have that down, when we do questions like this, okay. now. what are we going to get? Is it going to be a, a pH higher than 7 or lower than 7? Right. We'll have to calculate it, but what's it going to be? Is it going to be higher or lower than 7? Basic. 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 It is basic. The sodium ion is neutral. The cyanide ion, though, is a conjugate base of a weak acid. So it is able to accept a hydrogen. So it's going to be basic. Is HCN anything? Yes. It's a weak acid. In order to, to determine the uh, pH of this solution, you'd have to write a chemical equation. Now keep in mind that when sodium cyanide dissolves, it is a soluble compound because sodium is soluble with everything. So the sodium and the cyanide ion break apart. The sodium does nothing. I don't want to see sodium in your chemical equation. It's a spectator ion. It's neutral, so it doesn't do anything. The cyanide ion, however, does something. It's a base. Would you write the chemical equation for what happens when you put the cyanide ion into water? Cyanide is a reactant. Go ahead and move your pencil. Cyanide. What is the job of a base? To, get to it accept a hydrogen ion. Yeah. Where does it get it from? The Can water. it get it from the sodium? No. Water. It gets it from the water. So I need to see water in your reactant. And so knowing what the job of that cyanide ion base is, you should be able to write what the products are too. Sodium could. That's a chemistry that I don't know, though. <laughs> All right. So anyway, I had just a little line here of what how we know that it's a basic solution. There is our chemical equation. Yes. It's a base. It's a base equation. It's accepting a hydrogen from where? From what? We know what the initial concentration is, so we can write a an ice table. But if we want to solve for uh, a concentration and then determine the pH, we need the K. This is a base, so we need the KB of it. Now, if we go to the KB table, the cyanide is not going to be in there. However, if we go to the KA table, the KA of HCN will be in there. The KA of HCN is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. Would you be able to determine the KB of the cyanide ion? Yeah. Yes, from this thing right here. That is what I even had that down here. Any acids Ka times its conjugate bases KB equals KW.
KB, right, which would be KW divided by KH. The ones in the books are so weird because there's like two options and then they choose the one that's like weaker or something like that. I know, I think they were trying to be very like, thorough the way like they explained it. Yeah. What's the point of that? Why can't you well, that's what I was kind of addressing up here. We know that the cyanide ion is basic and the sodium is neutral, so that's how we decide what's happening in the water. That's what they were doing. I find it a little bit annoying that they kept mentioning water. You know that water's neutral. It's not going to do anything, but they just, they, they mention it every time. So this is point 0.1 minus x, x and x at equilibrium. So uh, Kb, because it's base, equals Kw over 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. We all know what Kw is, right? Its value? 10 to the negative 14? <coughs> That's equal to x squared over 0.1 minus x. So we solve for x. Now x is going to give us the hydroxide concentration. So just pay attention to what your x value represents uh, to make sure that you actually nail the answer, what, the answer that they're looking for. Hydroxide concentration. So when you take the negative log of it, that's the pOH, and then you subtract it from 14 to get the pH. The question is asking, what's the pH of this thing? But it produces hydroxide ions. Which is pOH. Yeah. Right. But no. But so how does that relate to NaCN? Right? Like, you want to get it on NaCN that you're calculating. Yeah, but there's the CN. The sodium is not doing anything. The sodium is just there and doing nothing. Sodium is so uninteresting. It doesn't do any precipitating. It doesn't do any uh, pH altering. It's just, it's a bummer. It would be bad to be sodium. And the mercury doesn't do any precipitating either. Oh, yes, wait. it does. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the sodium ion gets credit, you know, for being in the sodium cyanide solution, but it's not contributing at all, anything. It's just a cyanide ion. So anyway, uh, the concentration of hydroxide, which is the x value, is 0 0.00, I want to say it's 0 0.0019. Has everybody calculated? We'll work with it. So when we know the hydroxide concentration, we find the pOH. Um, I do remember that the pOH is 2 0.90. And therefore, the pH, 14 minus that, is 11.10. That's our answer. Anybody have any questions about that? So we seem to be doing the same thing every time with, with like the problems we did on Thursday and Friday. Um, they were pretty routine. These though, uh, we, we just had that extra step into figuring out, well, is it an acid or is it a base? And then once we have the equation written, boy, it's just the same old thing. Just fill out the ice table, do the K expression, solve for your unknown, and, and uh, find the pH. Does it get 
Huh? It was one three. Yeah. Oh. How come nobody said anything? Nobody calculated, just let me do it? Damn. Yeah, I'm still working on it. I'm still calculating what the other is leaving away. Because if it was point zero one one nine, then it's like point zero two. Zero point zero zero one oh, three is already more than ten. So the pH would be like two point seven. <laughs> so you caught my mistake on that one. From knowing that wouldn't be the right pH or POH. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you to try one more. Find the pH of an ammonium chloride solution. Wait, if it's a wait, if it's acidic, it just breaks down right away. Yes. I was just grabbing the marker to do that. Good call. Yes, you would need. I only have now the uh, the Ka of NH4 is in the book under the Ka table. It's the only conjugate acid that would be in there. It's pretty common, that's why they did that. The Ka of NH4 plus is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Another negative 10 power. Would you see if you can do the whole thing? Which one? NH4 CL. You started in the middle somewhere? I started from the beginning to like, wait, could we have done all the problems? Oh yeah, I mean, we're just down, you have these and then polyprotic acids, which there's not very many of those. I think you could do a multiplied case. No, 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 last year. Samir said they took him a long time, but... Yeah. Most of them should go pretty fast. Oh, so do the same thing for the Yeah. It's an ionic compound. So when you put it in the water, it breaks into its ion. That is, oops, I didn't draw it very straight. So yeah, you got the ammonium ion and the chloride ion. The chloride ion is nothing, it's neutral. So the ammonium ion is either neutral or it's acidic. Well, since it has lots of H's on it, it's a positive one, it's acid. If your cation has H's on it, it's probably an acid. Yeah. It's the conjugate of HCl, which is a strong acid. So it's not able to accept a hydrogen ion. Wait, you only use, like when you're taking the, so like if you're, so you know how it's basic, you're always going to have the POH, but if it's, you get the pH directly, and it's fewer steps. Yeah. It's okay, Eric. Um, I wrote my chemical equation like this. Probably not the way that you write yours. You didn't have water as your reactant. You just had NH4 plus as your reactant. It's totally fine the way you wrote it. In fact, I would prefer the way you wrote it. I write it like this just to give you some exposure that you can even have an acid with water as the other reactant. You can see water is acting as the thing that accepts the hydrogen ion. Once the acid gets rid of it, the, the water takes it. Um, but it's, 
it's completely fine if you wrote your equation like this. Just know that H plus and H3O plus are the same thing. Yeah. Um, about this problem? Uh, I've talked for too long. Wait, the formula is just NH4 Cl yields NH4 plus plus Cl. Yes, but then the NH4 interacts with the water. It forms HCl. No. It forms, because um, HCl doesn't doesn't exist together in water. It exists broken apart. Yeah, well, wait, what you This is what happens in water. This is the interaction between NH4 and the water. That's what an acid does. NH4 is an acid. Yes? Yeah, do it the what you I wrote in red. Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen this on the AP exam before, but if you write this, it's totally fine. I've seen them write this like on answer keys and all that. It's fine. Did I do something wrong? Low battery. Oh, no, thank you. Okay. Thank you. It makes no sense? Yeah, I don't get it at all. Wait, because I thought I Oh, man. No, the first part. I don't get how you got the equation. Yeah. The fact that this is a conjugate acid of a base. Ammonia is a base. Yeah. It's NH3. So when NH3 has an extra hydrogen on it, it has gained a hydrogen. That means now the NH4 is its conjugate acid. So that means it's an acid. It can give up a hydrogen. Wait, so, the, so we just ignore the CL? Yeah, ignore the CL. So, so, you, so you have a weak acid, you add a hydrogen to it, and then it becomes this. No, you don't add a hydrogen to an acid. An acid releases a hydrogen. Okay, so you have a weak acid. A base. A weak base. Like ammonia. Okay. Yeah? You add a hydrogen to it. Right. And then it becomes this. A weak acid? Yeah. The conjugate acid, that's why we call it a conjugate acid. It now has an extra hydrogen they can get rid of. Yeah? This is probably like the dumb thing to say, but like, even if you wrote the equation wrong, you would still get the correct pH. Because like, even if I, like, because like, when I wrote out the equation, I had NH4, NH4Cl, and I broke it up into NH4 plus and Cl minus. And like, that was 0 0.4, and then everything else was 0. And then after you do the ice tape and stuff, it's, you're still going to get the <laughs> What's the constitution of pH? Um, it just be like the ice table I mean, you wouldn't want that to be wrong, but I'm just saying. Yeah, it just happens that you had one reactant and two products, which you would, I mean, yeah. your wrong equation has one reactant and two products. You put the wrong numbers under them, but it turned out that you got two things divided by one, which turned out right. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be really <laughs> yeah, I don't so, want you to do that. you don't that. have a pH for that because you don't have an H in your reaction. Yeah, you need the negative log of the hydrogen concentration, then what? So yeah, we need to be able to come up with this. Know whether your solution is acidic or basic. So it's going to shift to the right. It's going to be 0 0.4 minus x here. You're probably all the way through this part because once we get to writing the equation, it's the same thing. We do the same thing over and over. It's just getting to the equation, knowing what's happening in water, that that's the hard part. So the Ka, which is given to you, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10 equals x squared over 0.4 minus x, which we neglect. And therefore, um, we're going to get an x value that is the hydrogen concentration. This number is what we use to find the pH of either hydrogen or hydronium. Remember, those two are the same thing. So in this case, x equals the hydrogen ion concentration, and that's 0 0.000019. That's where my 19 came from. It was from this problem. It's 1.9 times 10 to the negative 5. So the pH is 4. I can't remember. 
So yeah, it was just getting fun. Like it, on Friday, we were thinking, oh yeah, this is pretty easy. But then yeah, we throw these salts in and we get salty. Do you at least make sure that you know, say you I, like, you have a salt. I don't know how I'm going to figure out how to do this. Just salt and wait. 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 That's so yeah. Mean. Ain't you too salty as a salt? Yeah, well, there's problems in the, in the exercises. Take a look at how those are done. Yep. No, I got one other thing. Only because, let me have your attention, please. I want to show you what the last thing is in the uh, chapter. It's very short. Uh, I will continue it tomorrow, but I'm not going to take long at all tomorrow. Uh, I want to just go over an example or two with you. And the last thing is, uh, just because tomorrow is the last day before the quiz, I want to oops, introduce um, diprotic and triprotic acids. When you have, um, we, we call them polyprotic, the, the middle of the word prot represents proton, which is a hydrogen ion. So polyprotic acids have more than one hydrogen, like H2SO4 or H2SO3 or H3PO4. There's something that's peculiar about the polyprotic acids. And this is, um, this is true for all polyprotic acids, not just a few of them, but uh, it's pretty universal. I'm going to use H3PO4 because it has three H's on it. Uh, and I want, to, um, I want to show you what the three H's coming off look like. It's not a big surprise. You're not going to look at it and say, wow, I never expected that. I mean, it's, it's exactly what you would expect. Do know that the three H's don't come off with equal strength. The first H comes off strongest, always. The second H, or the third H, if it has one, will come off weaker than the first one. So take a look at H3PO4. H3PO4, the first hydrogen coming off of it, is pretty strong. Look at that Ka value. It's 10 to the negative third, which is... I mean, it's less than one, but it's, it's pretty high as weak acids go. So that's going from H3PO4 to H2PO4, the first hydrogen coming off has that K value. Now the H2PO4 still has two H's that can come off. The second one is going to come off next. They just come off one by one. And look at the difference in the K values. To go from Ka1 to Ka2 is a difference of about 100,000 times. So it's 100,000 times more difficult to take the second K or the second hydrogen off. Now we're just down to one left on the phosphate. The third hydrogen is going to also get released. So in all, there were three hydrogens that came off all individually. And then look at Ka3. It's 100,000 times smaller than Ka2. Now it's not always that it goes down by 100,000 times. It just happens the phosphoric acid approximately does. Here, here's now the good part about polyprotic acid. If I give you a problem and I, I, I say, okay, here's a solution of a, uh, a diprotic or a triprotic acid, what is the pH? When the first step happens, it's going to produce a healthy amount of hydrogen ion. The second step is going to produce a minuscule amount of hydrogen. And the third step, it's, there's not even a word small enough. 
is going to be a tiny little concentration of hydrogen. So really, the only step that's significant for coming up with hydrogen ions is the first step. So the part that's written in red down here, I want you to write down and highlight it or put a box around it in your notes. For all polyprotic acids, anytime you need the pH of a polyprotic acid, just use the first step with the first Ka. You don't even have to pay attention to any steps afterward if you need the pH, just the first. Yes? So, like, I think with the like, anti solution, they were like, um, they were trying to add them together. Like, uh, I thought they were doing something like that. When it was a polyprotic acid? Yeah. Yeah, but that second H um, would be negligible compared to the first one. So they maybe were showing what it looks like, but uh, you can just neglect it. It's so much smaller than the first hydrogen that it, it just doesn't even add to it. Okay, so that takes care of today. Tomorrow I want to give you an example or two with a diatriprotic acid and ask you to calculate the pH so we can see how it's done. Uh, I do want you to know that number 110 in the exercises you don't have to do. Uh, I'm not going to ask about that on the quiz. Um, I think the question is confusing, the answer is confusing for it, so we just won't do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I have to take it off our list. What? What's that? You're, You're talking a lot of problems for this one.